video, don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with as many people as you can. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, kindly do it so that you don't miss any of my videos. So without any delay, let's get started. And this is the Jason part 2. So without any delay, let's get started. Dab! Okay. Okay, so we are gonna do three chapters. Uh, I have kept this off only three chapters because these are very informative chapters. That's why I've kept only three chapters in this video. And then we would complete JSON and we would be on web APIs. Okay, so we are on JSON right now. And first we are gonna do JSON PHP. So a common use of JSON to read data from a web server so a common use of JSON is to read data from a web server. So commonly JSON is used to read data from a web server and display the data in a web page and display the data in a web page. So this chapter will teach you how to exchange da JSON data between the client and a PHP server. Okay, so in this chapter we will learn how to exchange JSON data between the client and the PHP server. So the PHP file, so let's see the PHP file. PHP has some built-in functions to handle JSON. PHP has some built-in functions to handle JSON. Objects in PHP can be converted into JSON by using the PHP function, JSON, .in, JSON underscore encode. So using the JSON underscore encode method of the PHP, uh, of PHP, we could convert objects of PHP into JSON. So like we are opening the PHP file, then we are giving dollar my object and is uh, uh, we are creating a my object and we are setting its name property to John. So this is how you create objects in PHP. Then you do dollar my objects age is 30 and then you give another property uh, dollar my object city uh, city you are giving another property its value is New York. Then you are creating a my JSON variable in PHP using the dollar sign. And you're using the JSON encode dollar my object. So JSON encode is just like JSON dot stringify of JavaScript. JSON encode turns PHP objects into JSON objects. So we are passing a dollar my object that is our PHP object. So now in my JSON we have a JSON object. Then we are echo um, dollar my JSON. So this would be sent as response text. So this echo my JSON. So let's check this out. So this is our PHP file. We are doing echo my JSON. So this is coming. Okay. I'll just have a sip of water. Sorry. The client JavaScript. So let's, we have seen the PHP file. So this um, the um, JSON uh, object uh, the JSON object would be our response text. So let's see the client JavaScript and that what we are doing with the client with that response text in the client. Okay. So here is a JavaScript on the client using an AJAX call to request the PHP file from the exam above. So we are using an AJAX call uh, to request the PHP file from the example above. So use json.parse to convert the result into a JavaScript object. So let's see the file, the JavaScript file. So first we are giving a h2 and we are showing in it get data as JSON from a PHP file on the server. So this is being shown. Okay. Then we have a p tag. Its ID is demo and we are not giving anything in it. Now in the script, we are creating a variable XML HTTP and we are uh, doing a, we are giving it a new XML HTTP request object. So we are creating a new XML HTTP request object. Now what we are doing, first of all, we, uh, we have to put this above. So this would happen first. So what we are doing now, we are, uh, uh, we are doing except xml http dot open so we are using the open method of xml uh, the xml http request object and we are opening the demo file dot uh, then demo underscore file dot php okay using the get method and asynchronous is true demo file dot php was this 
this was the demo file.php okay so we are opening this file then we are sending the request to the server okay we are doing xml http dot on ready state change so whenever the ready state would change we would call uh, this function over here in this we are checking if this dot ready state is equal to 4 this is referring to xml http so if xml http dot ready state equals to 4 ready state 4 means that the uh, request is finished and the response is ready so basically if the response is ready and it was successful to create a proper response use it, we are checking that that using the this dot status equals to 200 200 status means that it was successful so if if the response is ready and it was successful to make the response then it would go in this and it would create a my object variable in this what it would do it would do json.parse what does json.parse do json.parse converts a json object to a javascript object so you're doing json.parse and whatever response text would come so the response text you remember what was the response text response text was my json and what was my json my json was this json object so this json object is coming as a, a response text to the client and in this we are uh, converting that json object into ja a javascript object then we are accessing demo.innrhtml we are setting it in innrhtml to my object so whatever the uh, object is dot name so it's name so like what uh, what was the name properties value john okay so we set it as john right so john is being shown okay quite cool i don't know why i have to drink so much of water today php arrays arrays in php will also be converted into json when using the php function json.encode so you could use the json.encode sorry json underscore encode to convert a php array uh, into a json array so like here we have a dollar my array okay so this is a php array this is how we create a php array we uh, do the array we give the array method and then we are giving all of uh, the elements we want in that array then we are creating a dollar my json and we are doing json encode um, a dollar my array my array was a php array and we are changing it into a json array and saving it into my json so my json now has a json array now we are doing echo dollar my json so uh, the response text that is being created is my json and my json is this json array similar to javascript arrays but a bit different so the client javascript so let's see what is the client javascript now so here is a javascript on the client using ajax recall re call to request the php file from the array example above so use the json.parse to convert the result into a javascript array so what in this what we are doing first of all we are uh, we are writing this h2 tag so okay and then if i just do it a bit I'll just put this above. So in this JavaScript, what we are doing, we are creating a XML HTTP, and in this, we are creating a new XML HTTP request object. Then we are opening the demo file array.php. That was this file. We are opening this file using the get method, and asynchronous is true. Then we are sending a request to server and uh, in, what we are doing uh, whenever the on ready state change prop on ready state whenever the ready state property would change you we are checking that using the on ready state change we would call this function it would check if this dot ready state is 4 this dot ready state 4 means that the re uh, re uh, request is finished and the response is ready so if the request is finished and the response is ready this is referring to xml http just to remind you so if the response is cre uh, sorry if the request is finished and the response is ready and we are checking this dot status equals to 200 this is referring to xml http and status is a status 200 status means successful so if if it as if everything was successful then it would go in this and it is creating a variable my object it should have created a my array 
but it is doing my object maybe because arrays are also objects okay so my object we are doing json dot parse this dot uh, response text so the response text was an array and we are ch changing it to a javascript array using the json dot parse function then we are accessing demo and it's in our html we are setting to my object and its second element it, remember indexing starts from zero so zero one two so basically the third one the third one was peter so peter is being shown over here peter is being shown okay quite cool Ha! Oh, what a routine PHP database. PHP is a server side programming language and can be used to access a database. So, PHP is a server side programming language and it can be used to access a database. Imagine you have a database on your server. So, imagine you have a database on your server and you want to send a request to it from the client. So, you want to send a request to it from the client where you ask for the 10 first rows in a table called customers. So in a da database, basically, basically there are tables, okay, uh, and in that table, in those tables, we store information, any information that we want to store, okay, and like imagine you, uh, you have a database on your server and you want to send a request to it from the client where you ask for 10 first rows. So the 10 first rows in a table called customers. So, how can you do it? On the client, make a JSON object that describes the number of rows you want to return. So, first create a JSON object that defines the number of rows you want to return. Before you send the request to the server, convert the JSON object into a string. So, before you, uh, you send it to a server, convert it into a string and send it as a parameter to the URL of the PHP page. So let's see the example. Use json.stringify to convert the JavaScript object into JSON. So look, uh, we are creating an OBJ and here we are creating a JavaScript object. Okay. Then we have a DB parameter. DB short for database. So DB param uh, equals to json.stringify. What does json.stringify do? It creates JavaScript objects into JSON objects. So we are using the stringify function and we are uh, giving it on object. So object was this object. So it is changing it into a JSON object and saving. It is not changing it. It is uh, bringing a new object, which is a copy of this, but in JSON format and it is saving it in DB parameter. Okay, then in this, we are creating a new XML HTTP request object. So we are creating a new XML HTTP request object. Okay. And in uh, in this uh, first first of all this happens I don't know why uh, first of all every time this happens so command x command v so we are doing x, x xml http dot open we are opening the json demo db dot php and we are passing it the data x is equals to and then whatever db param. So we are passing it the data as d we are passing db param db param is the data that we are passing so it, uh, we are passing a json object which has one uh, key it is limit and one value that is 10 okay and uh, we are opening this file using the get method and asynchronous is true then we are sending the request to the server whenever ready state would change we would call a function in this function we are checking if ready state is 4 this means if request is finished and response is ready and this dot status equals to 200 that means if everything was successful then we would access this demo over here and it's in html we are setting to whatever the response text is so this is and this is the response text this is the response text over here so this is the json received from the php file okay so now let's see the php file so first of all the example w3 schools is explaining define an object containing a limit property and a value 
okay so we are defining an object containing a limit property and a value okay convert the object into a json string so we are converting it into a json string send a request to the php file with the json string as a parameter so send the request to a php file with uh, the json string as a parameter wait until the request returns with the result as json so wait until the request returns with the result as json display the result received from the php file take a look at the php file so now let's see what is the php file in this php file we are giving a header it's content we are setting content type to application slash json and char set is equal to utf8 okay then we are creating dollar object and we are doing json decode dollar get x comma false okay so what we are doing in this json decode is just like json encode it it is just like json dot stringify okay json dot stringify you must be remembering it converts json objects into javascript objects so json decode is just like json dot stringify json decode converts json objects into php objects so it is creating a p uh, uh, this whatever we pass over here so we are passing dollar underscore get so using this get method of the php file we are accessing x so whatever the x data was passed over here we were passing in the query it was x is equals right if we give q equals to then over here we have to give q okay so using dollar underscore get uh, x uh, we are accessing the x and its value so we are decoding it and then we are giving false so in object there is a php object now we are creating a connection with this uh, database so what we are doing we are creating a dollar connection equals to my uh, new mysql i so it is creating a, a, a connection with the server like this and it gives the server name this is the server name my server okay this is the um let me go on uh, ajax database then i would remember what is this in a server yeah server name username password and db name database name okay so uh, um so this is okay so okay oh no yeah so this is the server name this is the username this is the uh, password and this is the database name okay so my user is the username my password is the password and the north wind is the uh, database name then we are creating a, a statement variable and in this we are doing uh, connection and we are using prepare okay so we are preparing and we are doing select name so it would select name from customers limit question mark so what this is doing it would select name so maybe it is something name from customer table and the limit would be we would specify using the bind param so we are doing dollar statement bind param so we are giving s so we have to give s and dollar objects limit so dollar objects limit uh, properties value so it is 10 so we uh, the limit is 10 okay dollar statement execute so we would execute the statement then we are creating a dollar result is equals to dollar statement get result so it uh, brings the result and in uh, then we are creating a output variable and in that we are doing dollar result fetch all my sql i uh, a sock okay so it is uh, using a fetch all my sql i a sock and then it is uh, setting the response text to the uh, to json encode so we, it is uh, uh, the, here this is the op uh, it is in this there is a there is there uh, there is the values of whatever was there in the table okay and we are in uh, we are making a, a json format okay so this is this will be the response text the response text that was received was this so if we give like one over here so only one would come Okay, name Alfred's photo stay. Okay.
So PHP file con uh, explained convert the request into an object using the PHP function JSON decode. Access the database and fill an array with the requested data. Add an array to an object and return the object as JSON using the JSON encode function. Okay, so as simple as that. So loop through the result. So you can loop through the result also. So uh, convert the result received from PHP file into a JavaScript object. So first convert it into a JavaScript object or in this case a JavaScript array. So use JSON or parse to convert the JSON into a JavaScript object. So like here, in this example, what we are doing, we are uh, so this is the this is quite organized and proper. Okay, so this is the output. Sorry guys, I have installed Grammarly and this Grammarly is irritating me. Okay, I would uninstall it maybe. Okay. So here we have a variable obj, um, dbparam, xml, http, my obj, x, txt is equal to empty string. Okay, so obj is equal to, uh, here we have a limit, 10, okay. So dbparam is json or stringify the JavaScript object. In dbparam we have the stringify that. Then we are creating a new xml, http request object, okay. Then what we are doing, we are uh, opening the JSON demo db dot php and we are passing it the data db param using the get method and asynchronous is true. So uh, this uh, uh, JSON demo db dot php is this file. Okay. So we are opening this. Then we are sending a request. We are doing xml http dot on ready state. So when uh, ready state thing whenever the ready state would change we would call this function in this function we are checking if ready state is full that means if request is finished and response is ready and status is 200 that means that it was successful so it would go in this and it would do my object is equal to json dot parse this dot response check so the um, the json array that has come we are changing it to a, a javascript array then we are looping through the array and we are making a txt we are doing plus equals to my object x okay so there are in array in an array there are lots of objects okay so in the array there are objects so we are doing my object x suppose it would access the first first uh, uh, object then it would access the second object then third object then fourth object dot name and it would access every every object's name okay first it is accessing the object and then its name and it would add a br so the first name was alfred for kiste then it is adding a new line br adds a new line then it is anna true hilo empareda emparedados by helados so this is quite spanish okay so okay so you understand this and then uh, in this what we're doing we are accessing demo and we are setting it in html to text okay okay so php method post and then we are done so when sending data to a server it is often best to use http post method so it is best to use http's post method okay to send ajax oh this mosquito is irritating me oh it is biting me okay so when sending data to a server it is often best to use http post method so in ajax you learned why it is better to use post instead of get to send ajax request use the post method so to send ajax request use, using the post method specify the method and correct and the correct header so the data sent to the server must now be an argument to the send method. So there are only some changes and that are over here. When you are opening the file, you have to, uh, instead of get, you have to give post over here. And then you don't have to directly give data over here. Like we uh, gave in the get. So like in get, we were giving data over here, right? Like x is equal to dv param. 
but in post we don't have to do that we directly have to uh, don't have to give the data and we have to set to then we have to in post we have to do we have to set a, a request header and uh, we have to set content type header it's application we have to give application slash x uh, uh, or x ww form url encoded and then in the send we have to give the data so in the send we have to give this data x is equals to db param so this was the change in this file so everything is seen but there is one change in the php file also so the only difference in the php file is a method for getting the transfer data so over here you remember we give dollar underscore get over here but now we are giving dollar underscore post because we are using the post method over here in javascript okay so if you are using get in javascript then you have to give get over here to access x if you are using post in javascript we have to give post over here to access x and we have completed the chapter so let's take a short break Let's take a short break, guys. Oh. Guys, do check out my last video. It was a simple server client server app. Okay, so learn how to port a simple client server application. But first, for that, you have to install AMPs. So app called AMPs. I had installed it and my server was already running. Okay, and PHP was also working and my data base was also running. Was there? Okay. So let's continue. JSON HTML. JSON can very easily be translated into JavaScript. So it can be very easily translated into javascript javascript can be used to make html in your web pages so javascript can be used to make html in your web pages so an html table so make an html table receive a uh, table with data received as json so what we are doing in this we are creating a, a javascript object it's i'll just open so first of all in this we are creating a h2 tag then we are creating a p tag so in this what we are doing we are creating uh, so many variables object db param xml http my my obj x txt equals to mp so then we are doing object is equals to table so we are creating a table property customer and the limit is 20 ah is primarily okay so the limit is okay uh, so the limit is 20 okay uh, then what we are doing we are creating a db para and we are uh, doing json or stringify obj so it is uh, crea creating a new object a, a, a json uh, format of this javascript object and it is saving it in db para now what it is doing it is creating a xml http and uh, uh, it is creating a new xml http request object then what we are doing um i'll just move this up over here so we are now what we're doing we are doing xml http dot open so we are opening J json demo uh, underscore html underscore table dot php using the post method and we are giving asynchronous to then we are setting a, a request header because we are using a post method we are setting the content type and it is application slash x www form a uh, url encoded then we are doing xml http dot send and in this we are giving data that should be sended uh, and it is x is equals to and db param so we are sending db param in x as data then what we are doing we are doing xml http dot on ready state change so when the ready state would change it would call a function 
it would do if this dot ready state is four that means if re request is finished and response is ready and this dot state is equal to 200 that means if uh, the uh, it was successful then it would create a Maya object and it would do json dot sparse this dot response text so whatever json we get from uh, as response text we are converting it into into a javascript format and saving it into my obj then we are doing text plus equals to table so we are creating a table that border is equals to one so border we are setting to one okay then what we are doing for x in my object and it would do uh, it would add in txt tr so a table row then td table data plus my obj so whatever my obj was x so first it was a object then it was another object then it was another object then it was another object okay dot name so whatever object was it its name property okay it would uh, show it give that in table data then it would uh, close the table data then it would close the table row also and in the end after adding all the rows it would close the table also okay and then we are accessing demo and setting it in html to the text so this was our whole table I'll just subscribe okay so uh, this was a file so now we are on a dynamic html table make the html table based on the value of the drop down menus like union option customers okay like products and suppliers okay so you can uh, select different different tables so what is happening you are creating a select tag that means it is uh, 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 you are creating a select tag that means um uh, like it is creating a drop down using the select tag and whenever this uh, drop down option would be changed it would call the change my select function and it would pass it this dot value so whatever value it is okay then it would create an option its value is empty string and it, it its text is choose an option then it is creating an option its value is customers and it, its text is customers and then it is ah oh, then it is uh, an op there is an option its uh, value is products and uh, uh, its text is products and then there is an option its value is suppliers and uh, we are writing suppliers in it and then we are closing the drop down now we have here the script in this we have the change my select uh, function and in this we are asking for a SEL argument so in this we are creating a variable obj db param xml http my object x txt equals to empty string we are doing obj is equal to table equals to cell so whatever value was given if empty if there is choose an option the table value would be uh, empty string if it is uh, uh, customers then its value would be customers if um, it is uh, products then uh, its value would be products and if it is suppliers its value would be suppliers and the limit is always 20 so dv param is equal to json or stringify object so it is stringifying the javascript object a new object is coming and it is saving it in db param then we are creating a xml http request a new xml http request object then we are opening the json demo html table dot php file using the post method okay and asynchronous is true okay it would set a request header because we are using the post method content type is the header application is slash uh, application slash x www form url encoded then it would use the send method to send the request and it would send the data x is equals to plus db param with it so it is uh, sending the data db param in x okay so then we are doing xml http but on ready state change is equals to function so whenever the ready state would change this function would be called it would check if this dot ready state is 4 that means if if the re uh, request was finished and response was ready and this dot status is equal to 200 that means if everything was successful so it would go in this it would create a my object it would uh, uh, response text to the json object so it would parse it and value uh, and a javascript object would be, uh, my object's value would be a javascript object it is creating txt 
it is a table border one for x in my obj okay so it is uh, running a for loop it would do txt plus equals to trtd so first x is uh, um, what we say 0 1 2 3 4 s like this x is like this okay and we are doing uh what we are doing we are um so like what we are doing we are doing txt plus equal to uh, we are adding a table row then we are adding table data then we are doing my object x so my object has lots of objects in it okay so it is action accessing one by one objects and their name property so the table data will have their names and then it would close the table data then it would close the table row then it would add txt in txt it would add table uh, it would close table and it would access demo dot in html it would set, set to txt okay so it is an option customers so the customers table data is coming in products so the products table data is coming in suppliers the suppliers table data is coming html drop down list so make an html drop down list with data received as json so like like so like whatever data is received you are creating its drop down list okay so what is happening in this now in this we are creating variable object same thing but table is customers okay it is not a dynamic table it is customers then db param is the json format of this object then we are creating a new xml http request object then we are opening the file js json demo html table.php using the push method and asynchronous is true then we are doing set request header it would add a header content type and uh, uh, is it is application slash x www form url encoded then it is sending the request and it is sending some data with it the data is x is equals to plus db param so if we are sending data db param in x okay then it would do whenever uh, the ready state property is changing going to this function if this dot ready state is equals to 4 that means if uh, it uh, the request is finished and response is ready and this dot status is equals to 200 that means if it is successful then it would create my object is equals to json dot parse this dot response text so this dot response text was a json um, array and it we are changing it into a javascript array and saving it in my object then it, if we are doing txt plus equals to select tag so we are creating a select tag then we are looping through the array uh, at the end it would add uh, txt plus equals to option so it would add an option and its value would be not its value the text that would be shown it would be my object x so it would access the object dot names value okay then in the end it would uh, close the select tag and and then it would access demo and it's in html it would set to text so this was what we get and here the drop down is being created okay and we are done with the chapter now we are on json p let's take a break i'm not saying anything i just want a short break in which i don't speak anything Great guys. Let's continue. So JSON P. JSON P is a method for sending JSON data without worrying about cross domain issues. So without worrying about cross domain issues it is a method for sending json data json p does not use the xml http request object so it does not use the xml http request object so it is very easy to use json p json p uses the script tag instead so it uses the script tag instead so json p stands for json with padding 
So Jason and B stand for Jason with padding. That's why B is being added. Requesting of a file from another domain can cause problems due to cross domain policy. So you all know that requesting a file from another domain can cause problems due to a cross domain policy. Requesting an external script from another docu a domain does not have this problem. So requesting an external script from another domain does not have this problem. JSON P uses this advantage and request files uses the script tag instead of the XML HTTP request object. So you see here it is so easy. Just we are giving script tag and the source is demo JSON or PHP and whatever the response text would come, JSON P oh sorry uh, this it would be short. So the server file the file on the server wraps the result inside a function so this is the server file so here this is a json um this is the json that we say this is the json object and in this uh, what we are doing it is echo we are doing my func and in this we are giving a code and we are giving a dot so this is concatenation basically and it is adding dollar my json as a so it is giving dollar my json as a parameter to my func and it is then adding this code and this bracket and then it is uh, closing everything so no 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 i am saying wrong so what it is doing it is creating it is calling my function it is closing it it is adding this dollar my json it is then adding this and this semicolon and then it is closing it so this is the php file so the response text is this this is the response text but in javascript it will come different so the result returns a call to a function named my func with the json data as a parameter make sure that the function exists on the client okay so the function should exist on the client the javascript function the function name my func is located on the client and ready to handle json data so whatever is passed in this, it is accessing demo and if in HTML, it's setting to whatever data we get and its name property. So its name is John, that's why John is coming. Okay, so what is happening? What we are doing in this, uh, uh, there are two scripts. One script has the, has the uh, uh, in one script we are doing sources demo json p.php so it is bringing the uh, the uh, json p dot php and uh, in uh, in that it checks the response in that response it is calling my func my func is a function over here in javascript uh, it is a function in javascript so it would call it and it would pass it the uh, json data that it has and in this we are printing that json data its name property okay so it is as simple as that so now let's see how to create dynamic script tag over here we directly created the script tag right but how to create dynamic script tags so the example above will execute the my func function when the page is loading based on where you put the script tag which is not very satisfying okay so like the example above will execute the my function when the page is loading based on where you put the script tag which is not very satisfying so like if uh, if there are some contents below this also then it would have executed it uh, when the page was loading and that is not very satisfying the script tag should only be needed when uh, only be created when needed so it should only be created when needed so example over in this example it is create and insert the script tag when a button is clicked so in this what we are doing we are creating a button and whenever it would be click click button would be called okay and it, its text is click me and in this what we are doing in this we have a function click button and in this we have a variable s equals to document or create element script so using the create element we are creating a, a new script tag then we are setting it source to demo json dot php and then we are uh, uh, we are accessing body and we are appending uh, the script tag into it okay 
so it, whenever we click this uh, button it would come it would uh, come because like uh, then the response uh, the response uh, has come in the script tag because we are using jsonp and everything uh, and the response was in the response we were calling my funk and we were passing it json data so uh, my funk is being called because there is my funk in the client and uh, json data is being passed in it okay and in that we are accessing a demo and setting it in html to my object dot main so dynamic json p result so the example above are above are still very static so they are very static make the example dynamic by sending json to the php file and let the php file return a json object based on the information it gets so like in the php file it is uh, it has a header content type application slash json uh, char set utf8 then we are creating a dollar object and it, it is using json or dict code and so we are doing dollar underscore get and x so whatever data we get in x and uh, we are using uh, we are bringing it using the dollar underscore get function we are giving false also and json or decode uh, uh, like uh, creates a json object into a php object then we are creating a, a connection with the database uh, uh, server name is my server username is my user uh, uh, password is my password and uh, uh, database name is northwind then dollar result we are creating connection query so select name so it would select the name from uh, it would select name from uh, uh, dollar object and uh, dollar table okay so what is happening it would select the name from dollar object and in that dollar table okay so whatever table name is we are giving in uh, that object it would like if we give uh, customers okay if we give customers as uh, there so it would access it it would access name from customers if we are giving uh, like what other tables were there products then it would access name from products and its limit would be uh, or object and whatever limit we give okay in the client okay and then what we are doing uh, we are creating a dollar output if we are creating a, a php array then uh, output we are setting to result fetch all mysql i asoc so it is uh, using a fetch all and it is fetching mysql i asoc then it is echoing so it is setting the response text to my function and it would uh, give it json dot encode output so whatever output we get it is encoding it so it is uh, converting into it is converting it into json format and it is giving it to my uh, func so php file explained convert the request into an object using the php function json decode access the database and fill an array with the requested data add the array to an object so add the array to an object convert the array into json using json encode so convert the array into json using json encode function and wrap my function around the return object for the javascript the my func function will be called from the php file so function click button is over here in this we have a variable obj and s so in this obj we are setting table to products and limit is sent so it is bringing data from table products so it is bringing the data from the products table and the limit is 10 so it would bring 10 10 uh, rows okay s is equals to it is creating a script tag it uh, it's it is setting its source to a uh, jsonp demo dot uh, db dot php and it is giving it data json or stringify object so it is stringifying this object and so like uh, we are it is creating into json format this object and it is then giving it to uh, the php file okay through x then we are doing document dot body so it would access body and it would append child in this s so it would add the script tag in the body okay in the end then we are creating a my function uh, and in this we, we have a variable x and txt for x in my object so this my function would be called now so in the uh, response text my function would be called 
right so um, so the, uh, this my function is being called that's why uh, that's why this it is going in this my function and it is creating a variable x and txt for x in my object so it is looping through my object okay uh, and um and it is setting txt uh, plus equals to my object x so it would access both the first object then second object then third object and its name so whatever its name is and then it would add a new line and then it is accessing demo and its inner html it is setting to txt so the txt that we have so it is like all the customers are coming because we are giving customers over here so uh, basically what is json p um, using json p using this in json p using the script tag you are executing the response text okay so you can execute the response text using json p in only one line using the script tag instead of using all that big xml http request first in X, uh, uh, xml http request you first have to create a request then you have to open the file then you have to send it then you have to check for ready state change then you have to check that if ready state is uh for and it, it was successful then it would do the processing with the response text instead using this uh, in json p using the script tag whatever response text comes you are just displaying it and the response text is my func my func and you are passing it as json data so my func was here in the client so it calls the my func okay and then it uh, uh, in whatever in my func it uh, does it does so in my func we are creating my x and txt uh, and if we are looping through uh, x so first x is 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 like so on and then text plus equals to my object x so it would access the first object then the second object dot name so whatever name property is in it plus it would add a br so a new line okay and then it is accessing demo and it's in html it is set, setting to txt so now we are on a callback function so when you have no control over the server file how do you get the server file to call the correct function so how do you get the server file to call the correct function sometimes the server file offers a callback function as a parameter the php file will call the function you pass the callback parameter so what you can do uh, in your php file you can set that it wants a callback also so you can give it a callback equals to my display function so always if a php file calls the wrong it would uh, the php file would call only the callback function that we give okay so it would call only the callback function that we give we are giving my display function and my display function is there in script okay so giving a callback function is much more safe so that you are sure that the correct function is being called okay so we click me so in php file what uh, in the php file think of the php file what must be happening in the php file in the php file whatever callback function we give it would first access the data of it okay then it would set that data as uh, it would in the echo statement the in the response text statement uh, using the echo we give the response text right so um in that response text statement it it must be doing that like um 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 um, um, um yeah so whatever data uh, it gets it would give that and then it would open brackets and then it would uh, add the json object then it would close the bracket and then it would give a semicolon okay so this must be happening in php so basically i'll just explain what must be happening in php once again so in the php file first it would have access the callback data okay so first it would have access the data of the callback okay then it would have uh, done all the things with the server and all and then in the end when it would create the response text what it would do it would echo it would do echo and then whatever data it gets okay then it would give an opening bracket then it would uh, add the json data then it would give the closing bracket and then it would give the semicolon okay so this is what must be happening in the php file 
and we have just completed the object so we have completed this video so thank you guys if you like the video don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with as many people as you can and if you are not subscribed to my channel yet kindly do it so that you don't miss any of my videos thank you guys bye stay safe stay healthy and keep watching my videos dab